Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, what's in that rag that's putting your nose all like a joint? Well, it's, it's these celebrity chefs and celebrity food experts. They're all over the place, aren't they? Hogging the limelight, promoting their latest TV project or their latest cookbook or hot sauce or no stick frying pan. Well, I suppose so. What's in the box? Oh, I thought I'd bring along a few copies of our latest and best-selling cookbook. You see, uh, we can place them strategically around the kitchen in view of the cameras. It can't hurt sales, can it? Yum, yum, yum. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Aries. Well Steve, uh, as it turns out, we are actually talking about cookbooks today because you have a little bit of information you'd like to impart to our audience. Indeed I would, Carl. Like, your soup should have had a little bit more tomato, or your chicken should have been in the oven an extra 10 minutes. So what I do, I usually just make a note in my cookbook that I'm using for the recipe. I'll just make a note in there. So this could be my encyclopedia to fall back on. That's a very good idea because quite often, not with this, this book, book by the way, <laughs> because everything's but quite often with cookbooks, the recipes don't turn out quite the way the author intended. Um, and uh, you know, you decide if I'm going to do that again, I will have to change that and make it longer cooking time or shorter cooking time. So you can make a little note of the, of the adjustment the right in the book. And these are available now, by the way, at leading bookstores <laughs> everywhere. Um, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> coming up on the program today, our very special guest is Glenda Janes. Glenda is the Chief Executive Officer of St. John Ambulance in Newfoundland and Labrador and the province of New Brunswick. And uh, we'll be finding out everything we want to know about St. John Ambulance from uh, Glenda. And uh, what will we be cooking with Glenda, by the way? We're going to be making an amazing uh, parmesan crusted tilapia. And great big C alumnus and renaissance man himself, uh, Bob Hallett, will be here. And Bob uh, owns a restaurant called Tavola. He also cooks and he's going to be showing us how to make a sweet dessert. It's a French style uh, buttery pear tart. Mmm. So stick around. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. Well, here we are, and uh, it's not very often that we have a real chief executive officer on this program, and we've got one in Glenda Janes. Welcome. Thank you. Steve. Great to be here. Steve thinks he's the chief executive <laughs> officer. Well, I try. I, I share try. that with you any yeah, day. Steve. Yeah. I, I humor him and let him think that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, boy, look at that. Oh, fish. Amazing. Yes, Glenda Carr. What we have here is some fresh tilapia. It's from the uh, aquaculture farm there on uh, Pearl Town Road. Uh, Jim Lester grows these, and they're mm. absolutely amazing. Beautiful fish. So we've got some fillets here, and what we're going to be doing, we're going to be breading them with an Italian seasoning and uh, parmesan and uh, pan frying them. And Carl is going to saute some fresh green beans there. We've got some jasmine rice, some capers, and I'll cut some lemon as well, and we're going to mix that and incorporate that all together. So. Oh, we've got the fixings of a really nice tasting, but also a very healthy meal. meal. Absolutely. Which uh, we like. Okay. So what I've done here, I've got some uh, flour and I've got some egg together and I just season them a little bit and I've got on my Italian seasoning. So I'll just put a little bit of oil into our pan and get that going. And I'll put some butter in. I guess just one uh, Yeah, that, was, that should be fine, Carl, I think. I don't think we have to overdo yep. it. And I'm going to put a little bit of butter into ours as well to see that get going. And I'll give you the Henri uh -huh. fish flipper. There we go. Fish flipper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cal wanted to use it on the show, so oh, we had to do the yes. most appropriate this dish. Is the inaugural use of this? It is. It's yes. the first time it's ever been used. Oh. So yeah. Enjoy privileged. it. Enjoy <laughs> it. Get the most out of it. <laughs> Indeed. 
Yeah. So Glenda, what, tell, just tell us, what, what's the general mandate of St. John Ambulance anyway? Right, so um, our uh, general mandate is to teach people how to save lives. Um, so That's clear. That's it's very clear. 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 It's very yeah. clear. Good. Um, <laughs> so we do first aid training. We have uh, uh, volunteers who go out into our communities as medical first mm -hmm. responders. Yeah. And uh, they also are present at a, a number of community events and ensure the safety of uh, those people attending the events. And we see them there. Yes, yeah. for sure. They're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, and we also have a therapy dog program, which is one of our uh, right, probably yeah, was, fastest growing. I was growing. actually going to ask you about that a little later on. Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, right now we've got to okay. get this fish Good. on the go. Got two pieces here Delicious. now, and then we'll go put it straight down into the pan. So like that, so. Uh, what is the coating again? Uh, there, there's some Italian seasoning there, a very, very fine breadcrumbs, and Parmesan cheese. Mm. Okay. Parmesan cheese, uh, Carl, as you can see. So. And I would add a little black pepper if it were me, but um, that's just me. Well, yes. what would you do, Carl? We'll leave that to you when you do your vegetables. You put, I'd put a little okay. bit of black pepper in there as well. Okay. So. Yeah. I think you're going to get You give a recipe and you give it out, it's always got to change. It. That's you know, right. So. Yes. Well, yes. well, I am a critic, you know. Yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Glenda, how long have you been with St. John Ambulance? Um, I've been with the organization now 16 years. Wow! Yeah. I had, really? I, I yes. thought you were a newcomer. No, no, so, not at all. But you know, 16 years. isn't that great? So yes. here's somebody who started 16 years ago with St. John Ambulance, and now you're the CEO. And now I'm the CEO. Which is, isn't that fabulous? Yes, I love stories like that where people yeah. start and kind of go up, 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 and That's then, right. then they're at the ultimate... Uh, Level. Yeah, that's it's wonderful. Been a, it's been a wonderful yeah. uh, and varied professional uh, experience for sure. Yes, I imagine. Yes, yes. So, and you've seen lots of ups and downs like a lot of organizations. Yes. Um, yes. So, how long has St. John Ambulance existed in Newfoundland? Uh, in Newfoundland, we've been around about 130 years. Wow! Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say since Confederation. No, <laughs> but no, about that's 130 even longer. years yeah, is now. That, and that's excellent. Uh, it, yeah, it's quite an old organization yeah. and uh, has its roots certainly way as far back as the Crusades. <laughs> Yes, and the Knights of Malta. So oh we don't goodness. go back quite that far when yes. we're trying to... Well, Steve to goes back that far. No, I know. I don't. See, I was just trying I to don't be so nice. That. But, you know, it was only the other day he was saying to me, I remember when I was in the Knights of Malta, <laughs> and this, this, this would not have gone on. Well, Steve, you can actually become a knight with our organization. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I believe you have some friends who've been oh, knights with St. John. I, I, I do indeed, yeah. 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 I could wear the gown and everything, couldn't I? Yes, okay. yes, the mantle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what it's called, the mantle. It's called a mantle, yeah. yes, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, the mantle shows our uh, white cross, uh, which is signifies what we do in the organization, for sure. Yeah. So when, when did you initiate? Is it, is it European? Is it, yes, yeah. the Amalfi Cross is yeah. uh, European, um, out of London, for sure. And, yeah. uh, yep. Like a lot of those organizations, you know, yes. uh, they, they all started in Europe and they did. transferred over here, I yeah. guess, right. when the settlers came over. <laughs> they did, yeah. and uh, St. John had a huge role, actually, in the, in the World Wars, uh, led by Dr. Clooney McPherson. Uh, so I he was the first president of St. John Ambulance in Newfoundland and I Ecuador. had no idea yes. that Dr. Clooney McPherson he was, was St. John Ambulance. Involved. And, of course, a lot of people may not know this, but I always like to remind them, uh, when his name is brought up, that he was the inventor of the first, it was rudimentary, but the first gas mask Indeed. that was used in World War One. He certainly was, yeah. yes, yes. So. And that's, and that's quite, quite something. Of course, yeah. he's known for a lot of other things as well. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, you may not know this, but he's also responsible for the revival of the Newfoundland dog. I did the, not know the breed, that. the breed of Newfoundland dog, which is which had was almost extinct, and he brought it back from mm. from the brink of extinction. And uh, I'm not going to get into that now. No. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we're here to talk about you. Um, <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, uh, St. John Ambulance. I, I guess you depend uh, to a large extent on volunteers. We certainly do. And yeah. how many volunteers do you have in in the province? 
So in the province, we have about 200 medical first responders, mm -hmm. and then we have another 100, a little over 100 uh, therapy dog teams. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I guess the dogs are volunteers, too. <laughs> they, they certainly yeah. are. We've celebrated yeah. them in, during this past volunteer yeah. week yeah. Uh, as, as broadly as we've celebrated their owners. So they yeah. definitely do um, go out there in uh, various community organizations Absolutely, as teams. Absolutely, yeah. Do about 17,000 mm -hmm. visits a year. Oh, is that wonderful? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And what kind of dogs do you wonderful. use? Any kind of dogs. They nice go through dogs. extensive. <laughs> yes. dogs. My dog would Pleasant. not make it, <laughs> but um, we they go through extensive screening before yeah. they um, are passed and, and verified to go uh, into uh, the organizations that we have uh, uh, contracts right. with. Yes. And I, I, I hear that uh, your dogs. Uh, are also working with like Memorial University students we now. Are, yes, in yeah. the last couple of years. How's that been working uh, out? It's working out so well. As a matter of fact, we just started it uh, initially to do uh, to go visit the students during exam week. When they're and stressed. It has <laughs> grown, right, but it has grown now, and they're there almost every week. We, oh we've had goodness. such a huge demand from the students, yeah. so it's, it's taken off. It's great. That's program. fabulous. Yeah. That's fabulous. I'm so mm -hmm. I'm so glad to hear that. It's delicious. And I've seen your, your dogs, and they really are the oh, sweetest animals. They're amazing. Just wonderful. Yeah, we're yeah. very lucky. They often come and visit us at our workplace, yeah. Yeah. and uh, we appreciate that uh, tremendously. Yeah. So, so maybe, uh, maybe we just have a look, see, maybe we can just turn it or not. Okay. I'm very I nervous I using Carl's new uh, fish flipper. Fish, <laughs> fish flipper. <laughs> Do I turn? Yeah, go ahead. No. <laughs> I think, I think, I think some you. people call them spatulas, but, <laughs> um, so I think everything's under control here. Whoops. Okay. Um, I'm going to nip down to the wine cellar okay. and see if I can come up with a nice bottle of wine. I'm sure you'll come, come up with something. Okay. There. You, you two carry on. Okay. That's thank perfect, you. Right? Yes. You yes. Wonderful job there. Well, wonderful. it's, it's good. It's nice. a good tool to use. <laughs> It's anyway, you can see it's nice and golden brown yes. there. The Parmesan cheese, cheese has really made a beautiful looking flavor there as well. It's so delicious. And with Carl's rice that he's got there, I'm going to add some lemons into there. I think it's going to be a wonderful meal. Hi, Martin. Hi, Carl. Well, today we have fresh tilapia fish, local tilapia fish. Oh, sounds lovely. And uh, we're serving it in a, a nice crust of uh, Parmesan. And, We've got um, rice and vegetables to go with it. So mm. what would be the Pesantes and Segovia uh, wines of choice? Well, I have a little bit of everything for that because why the tilapia is not a very, you know, has a, a mild flavor, mm. but the crust with the Parmesan gives it a little bit more body, more, uh, more, more flavor and spiciness to it. So um, I have three suggestions. The first one is a sparkling. I like uh, a sparkling sometimes with dinner because it is uh, uh, gives it a little bit of more festive mm. uh, note. Uh, and this one is a, a Spanish sparkling wine, 100% Verdejo. It's called Cantazan Brut. And um, lovely, lovely choice, good acidity. The next one is a new one to the market here. It's the uh, Gonella um, Pinot Grigio. And the Pinot Grigio are usually a little bit insipid. But uh, this one has been left on the um, grape skins for quite a while, so it's a little bit darker in color and has a more body and a little bit more flavor. Than so it's usual. just Pinot Grigio? Or? Just Pinot Grigio, 100% okay. Pinot Grigio. Yeah. And then the third choice, like if somebody would rather have like a red wine with it, yes, yeah. um, you can have a um, lighter red wine. So this one is an Italian. Pinot Noir, it's a Pinot Nero from uh, Kellerai Caltern, uh, northern Italy, very light in, in flavor, lovely, lovely wine, mm -hmm. not as full bodied or heavy as some of the American or, uh, or New Zealand wines. Right. So it would be a great choice as well. Wow. Um, as for price point, we have the Contes en Brut for about uh, 20, uh, 20 dollars. This one is about 17, uh, this one's 26. Okay, well, I think I'm going to go with the um, the 
Holy Soli Pinot Grigio. Yeah, yeah, why not? Um, Try that one as uh, opposed yeah. to some of the other Pinot Grigios <laughs> that uh, yeah, I th are I th around. It's a little bit different. It's a good I'm choice. I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes with the tilapia. Yeah. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you very much. Now we'll just take our Parmesan breaded fillet of tilapia out and just flip it over so it's nice and golden brown there. Nice. So let's go and visit Glenda and Carl in the dining room. Okay, and now we're all set. And the fish looks beautiful, the mm -hmm. tilapia. Tilapia, tilapia, whatever. <laughs> uh, you say tomato, I say tomato. Let's have a taste. Mm. It looks very, very crisp. Mm. Mm. That is mm. delicious. That is delicious. That's so delicious. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm very impressed by that. Mm. Um, Glenda, I just I just want to carry on a little bit before we uh, we talk into this. Um, so, a, a major part of the Saint John Ambulance program over the decades has been the, the I guess it's called the first responder yes. program. That's where people are at the regatta and and that sort of thing. So, what kinds of first aid are they prepared to? Um, you know, do uh, if somebody shows up right. or if um, somebody's injured. Yeah, all of our volunteers are trained in um, advanced medical first responders. So they actually do a 40-hour uh, program. Really? And they're required then every month to uh, have their skills tested. So they're always put to the test in scenarios and stuff. So they're very, very well prepared to respond to any kind of first aid emergency until um, um, the ambulance mm. or first responders. And, and you you do courses as well where you can teach people how to do the Heimlich maneuver and, Absolutely. and uh, rudimentary, I guess, first mm. aid or basic first aid, don't you? Mm -hmm. We train um, several thousands of people in the province of Newfoundland uh, every year. And as a matter of fact, Carl, one of the great things that we get to do is hand out life-saving awards. So mm. we often find out that someone has used their skills to save a life, and uh, we honor them uh, with life-saving awards. Mm -hmm. it's very, wow, yeah. that's wonderful. And believe me, folks, I actually saved somebody's life once oh. with the Heimlich maneuver. It was my mom's life. Yeah. And yeah. uh, it was it was very scary uh, when it happened, but I because I had learned how to do the Heimlich maneuver, I was able to to save her life. Um, and I have a special thank you for to St. John Ambulance because once when I was doing a live broadcast from the regatta, it was pouring rain, and I was I was going down Boathouse Lane too fast. There was rivers of rain going down Boathouse Lane. I slipped on the slippery pavement and um, really did like serious damage to my knee, uh, cut it, tore, <laughs> tore my pants. And there was, you know, well, I won't get into the gory details, but anyway, <laughs> I managed to find the St. John Ambulance tent. Oh, <laughs> and they fixed me up and you know, they were the sweetest people and so professional. I was so, so impressed by the St. John Ambulance people at the Brigada. So folks, when you see them there, they're there for a reason and they do really great work. And thank you and uh, all of your colleagues at St. John Ambulance. Cheers. Thank okay. you very much. Cheers. Good luck in the future. And uh, coming up next, Bob Hallett's going to be with us to make a buttery pear tart. Our next guest is a musician, singer, songwriter, uh, author, activist, um, and now I think we can probably add Baker to his <laughs> quiver. Uh, oh, he's a restaurateur, by the way, did I mention that? Uh, his restaurant is Tavola. Uh, he is, of course, Bob Hallett, who's always welcome on this program. Hi, Bob. Good day. Uh, so, um, I gotta say, I I'm impressed. Uh, I see the finished product here. I, I assume you're going to show us how to put this together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people talk about making desserts, and it's often very problematic. Uh, even people who love to cook hate baking. Yeah. Myself included. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's I, yeah. the fussiness of, you know, the measuring and the combining ingredients and that whole idea of chemical transformation is, it's very intimidating. So, you know, I, I do a lot of home cooking, of course I have a restaurant, sure. and I'm always looking for a dessert that lends itself to the non-baker, but still demonstrates effort. 
This yeah, shows you right. want to try. You're trying to yeah. do something. And that's right. Yeah. This is it. This is a very simplified version of the, the, the famous French bistro dessert, the tarte tete. Mm hmm So that's uh, pear, obviously. There's five ingredients in this, which is the beauty of it. Okay. We have a piece of puff pastry, a jar of marmalade, a pear, some butter, and some caster sugar. Excellent. And that's it. And we're going to turn this... This very simple, very unassuming set yeah. of ingredients into this yeah. amazing final yeah. product. And the nice thing about this dessert is, it's occurred to me, you could use any stone fruit in that. Like you, you could use, what? A well, yeah, apples. apples. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Peaches, plums. Peach, plums. Yes, it would, all, it would and, all work. In fact, the, you know, the classic presentation uses. Apricots, it uses uh, peaches, it uses pears, yeah. mm -hmm. it often uses uh, you know a firm apple. It needs to be something a little bit firm as you're essentially cooking yeah. the fruit. So like something like blueberries would just fall apart. That's right. Um, and also, you know, the jam is a critical ingredient here, so it needs to be something that works well in kind of a citrusy yeah. environment. Yeah. yeah. So I found yeah. I've tried it with blackberries, it doesn't work so well. You know, it right. needs to be things that that where a marmalade or a jam is gonna pair very nicely. Okay. So what do we do? So let's see. So this is the simplest thing ever. So first thing you do is you take a pear. Or your firm fruit, yeah. mm -hmm. cut a piece off, and slice it fairly thin. Definitely, you know, no more than a millimeter for each piece. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Because again, you're, you're going to cook it, so it can't be too it's, thick. It's, yeah, and it's not going to be in the oven that long, is it? No, no, not at all. And so you take that, I'm going to put that knife aside. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to unroll a piece of... A pastry. Puff pastry. And you don't have to make the pastry. You can no, buy you don't that. have to make the pastry. In fact, making puff pastry, I mean, uh, is, is that's, a... That's, that's an, a day long... <laughs> it'd be very time consuming. It's they, very difficult. Yeah. And, you know, your yeah. chances of getting it right are, are slim. But yeah, if you're not a right. seasoned baker, this is not the easiest thing in the world to make. No, it sure isn't. So we're just going to take this. Yeah. We're going to try not to pull it yeah. apart here. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. We'll lay it right on our stone here. Perhaps we'll do a better job of that. There we go. It's already turning into okay. a piece of pizza dough. Yeah. Now to make this work, I'm going to very roughly roll Turn one side, in. roll the edges in, and yeah. again, there's no, there's no, you know, there's Rhyme no. Rhyme or reason to do it. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to be that's pretty. Kind of just, nice, uh, that's that's one of the nice things too. You can you can uh, be very kind of ad lib. <laughs> <laughs> you can, and the, the final product, you know, yeah. is it looks. If it looks a little rough, it looks a little rolled. It's, it looks oh, a, it's little, a rustic uh, kind that's of dessert. That's the idea. It's a rustic it? dessert. Yeah. It's supposed to look like you're Nanda, you know? Yeah, so it's yeah, supposed exactly. to look like you spent. Yeah. It's supposed to look like you tried, but you're not <laughs> supposed to put enormous yeah. amounts of time into it. Yeah. So I'm going to take the uh, Egg? bit of butter we've melted oh, butter, here. Sorry. Yep. Just, just to give it that extra layer of richness. So, I mean, obviously, it is puff pastry, so it's already got a fair bit of butter, in there, butter and sure, sugar and salt yeah, in yeah. there. But still, you need a little bit more just to make sure that the, uh, the underpanning actually cooks and you get that sort of really nice sort of golden brown color you're looking for. Exactly. And that's a lot of, there's a lot of, a lot of nice flavor in that butter too. <laughs> yeah, you're not, there's no, uh, you know, as any chef will tell you, there's no too much butter. <laughs> no, that's right. And then after that, you just lay these down in whatever way you like. If you start up here, you get a nicer kind of a yeah. pretty functional thing going on. Different. And again, you don't have to fuss with this. It doesn't have to look pretty. Nope. It doesn't have to all be in a fancy row. It doesn't have to, uh, yeah. you know, reflect any aesthetic other than this is my dessert. I'm trying. And away we go. And away we go. I like these pears because they are, they're already sweet. Yeah. But they yeah. still have a flavor, you know, they yeah. taste like something. And even mm -hmm. after you cook them, you know, they get that nice caramelization on the road. It still tastes like pear. The nice thing about the pears that we get in the supermarket here, well, these days anyway, is that um, they're unlike a lot of other fruit. They, it tastes ripe, or at least yeah. it tastes yeah, good. You gotta have a chance. You gotta have. You gotta so, find a fighting chance. So much of what we buy, like a peach, for example, tastes really woody, and it's like you know not nice at all. But pears are usually pretty good. Yeah, and this lends itself too to working, you know, with the fruit we get here. You know, I mean, yeah. realistically, we are dealing with, uh, you know, yeah. really limited ingredients in Newfoundland, and yeah, a lot exactly. of ingredients we get are not at their best. So we That's have right. to work with stuff. Yeah, we're at exactly. the tail end of the food chain. This is it. Yeah. We've got to work with the stuff we have. So I'm just gonna right. brush these. Give them a little light brush of butter, nothing, uh, nothing heavy. We're not trying to drown them. Yeah. No. Just to make sure that they've got that, you know, that final extra layer mm. of flavor. And then we bake this in the oven like this. Well, yeah. well we've got we to need put the secret on. ingredient. So, what most French cooks do to add that layer, that extra layer of richness, is they melt a little bit of jam. Now I picked a Robertson's, you know, your yeah. classic sort so of uh, marmalade, <laughs> British Isles marmalade. Yes, exactly. But you could use a, a peach marmalade. You could use a ginger stem marmalade. Yeah. Um, for you know different fruits like exactly. a strawberry would you know yeah. would pair well yeah. with apples. Absolutely. Yeah. There's lots of ways to do this, yeah, and yeah, yeah. certainly the rules are there are no rules, yeah. which is again uh, plays to my you know kind of 
rebellious personality. So yeah. again, I don't put piles of this stuff so on, just enough on to goes, try to give it a little bit of color. On goes the marmalade. And after that, it's popped in an oven. What what temperature? Uh, I would usually put it 375 for 20, 25 minutes. Until it's golden brown. Until it's golden brown. You yeah. just got to keep an eye on it. You know, it's not, uh, yeah. again, it's and, not, you don't need to think about it too what, much. What you end up with is this beautiful. You end up with this beautiful. Tart. I'm going to sprinkle this with a little bit of a. Caramelization there. With a little caster sugar again, yeah. just to give it a. That's right. It'll also, yeah. you know, give it that sort of brown color that you want, you know. Okay, well, I think we've run out of time, Bob. Uh, this is an excellent dessert. Very simple, as you say. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do this. And uh, even I could do this. This so. is it. That's it. We've <laughs> even done. I could do it. It's right. done. It's finished. It's incredible. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much for being on the show. And that's Thank it you for gentlemen. this edition of One Chef, One Critic.